I love series and sequences. Series and sequences is a fantastic topic. There's a lot of fun to it. And it's very, like I said, different from what you've been doing recently, which is kind of, um, it sort of turns a little bit into death by algebra and you're trying to see something on a diagram and it's not connecting. This is going to get into calculus territory before too long. You remember I said to you, that's actually the main reason why we're learning it this term ahead of the topics later in the term. And one of the key pieces to get us there is this idea. We're moving from the idea of a sequence, a bunch of things in order, to a series. So a partial sum is what happens when you add up the terms in a sequence. So it's another name for a series um, that's finite. We'll come to series that aren't finite, series that are infinite a little bit later on, but one step at a time. So in order to get there and build this understanding, let's recall what we've got so far. Okay, so we know what a set is, we know what a sequence is, we know what a series is, there's very big ticket ideas. We called sequences and series one big word that starts with P that sort of overarches. Do you remember what the word was? We call it progression, right? Because you progress from one term to the next. There's a, there are early terms, there are later terms. You only have that when you have an idea of order. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, under progressions, we looked at two particular kinds of progressions and they had some very handy acronyms. Do you remember what they were? We talked about APs or arithmetic progressions. And what we developed was a little formula for the nth term in an arithmetic progression. We started, we always start with the first term which we called A. And then because an arithmetic progression is about adding things, right? It's like you've got a common, common difference and you add up some number of those to get to the nth term. We said, well, the number of common differences you add up is always one less than the term you're on, okay? Because the first term doesn't have any of them, the second term has one, third term has two. So this is what we developed, okay? We then said, all right, if you advance from term to term, not by addition, but by multiplication, we don't call that an AP, we call it a, a GP, a geometric progression. And in just the same way, we, fe we came up with a formula for the nth term of a GP, right? We said, you again start with the first term, but there's not a common difference, there's a common ratio. So we had an R, and it's the same deal. You're always lagging one behind, so that's where that N minus one comes from, okay? So this is where we are at. What we want to go to from here is what happens when you don't have the nth term, but the sum of the first n terms. So I'm going to define some new notation for us, right? Let's define, if this is um, the nth term, then I'm going to define s of n as the sum of the first n terms. The way that I would write that algebraically is, you start from term one, you add term two, you add term three, there's my pattern, you see I needed three terms, and you keep on adding until you get to the nth term, which is t of n, okay? So here is my, my ending here, right? So, um, in words, I said this the first time, what this means is the sum of the first n terms. Okay? So when we say, when mathematicians say partial sum, this is what they're referring to, right? Um, you take part of a series. For example, if we were talking about the series of, the sequence rather, of odd numbers. 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, etc. Okay? I could say, what is the sum of the first five terms? 1 plus 3 plus, 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9. Okay? It's a partial sum. It's not every odd number that ever exists. It's just part of that sequence, okay? Hence the name. Right. Now, what we're going to do is just like we did for these guys, we developed these formulas, right? We thought them through, we did some algebra. We're gonna develop the formulas for these guys for APs and GPs, okay? And it involves some interesting tricks. So let's start with APs first. There's a, um, a famous German mathematician. Um, his name was uh, Gauss, and he was a really, really smart guy. And the, uh, the story goes that as like a, a really young primary school aged kid, um, he was just so smart, he would always 
caused problems for the teacher because he was always bored because he was so clever. And so the teacher thought, I know what I'm going to do. I've got a great idea. I'm just going to give this boy a task. He likes numbers, he likes maths. That's just going to keep him busy for a while. So the teacher said, okay, little master gas, here's what I want you to do. I want you to, it didn't obviously use this language, but I want you to add up a particular arithmetic progression. Here's the arithmetic progression he was given. Take every number, every counting number, one, two, three, etc., and add them all, all, way, all the way up to 100. Okay? Add up 100 numbers, that'll keep you busy. Okay? And Gauss, off you go into the corner. And much to the teacher's dismay, or so the story goes, he came back about 15 seconds later and said, the answer is, and provided the sum. Now, how did he do it so fast? What was he thinking? You know, apart from just being a smart guy, adding up 100 numbers takes a long time. So what kinds of patterns can we take advantage of, because maths is always about patterns, that will help us to work out what this sum is really, really quickly? Now what I want us to do is, um, go ahead, write that partial sum, the first 100 counting numbers. What I'm going to do is, I'm actually going to provide a little bit of extra information here that doesn't look like it's necessary, but will help us. Okay. In order to know what this partial sum is, you've got to know the pattern. So I needed the first three terms. You've got to know where you end, right? So this is the sum of the first 100 terms. That's enough information to know everything about this series, about this partial sum. But I'm going to add in a little extra information at the end of the series to mirror what's happening at the start. So if I start with 1 plus 2 plus 3, and add up some number of numbers. I know I ended at 100, but what happens just before 100? And the answer is, well, 99 happens just before 100, and 98 happens just before that. I'm going to include those guys. Now, Gauss's insight is really, really clever. Gauss's insight was that if you think about this from the left-hand side, you go from left to right by adding 1. Right? You're progressing from left to right, you're always increasing. But you can just as easily look at this object from the other way. Do you notice, I could have written this particular partial sum as starting from 100 and then counting down. Right? So you've got this kind of symmetry here in this partial sum. Right? As a consequence, you could think about this a couple of ways, but here's the way that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to approach it with um, Gauss's way of thinking. If what you did was you added this sum to itself, but backwards, if you added this sum to itself, but you added it in reverse order, if you have 100 over here, then you're going to have 99, and then you're going to have 98, and you're counting down. So what are your last three terms? 3, 2, and 1. Okay. Gauss saw that this was handy because what he had created was something which is very, very orderly. Notice the way I've written it. We usually write our equations all the way across one line, but I've written it on two lines for a purpose. Do you see that what I've created is a bunch of pairs? Do you see that? Every term in the, in the first partial sum has a counterpart in the second partial sum. It is the same series after all. Okay. Because they've gone in reverse order, have a look at what happens if you add up this pair. What do you get? 101, right? What about this pair? 101. Now, that's not a coincidence. It's not a coincidence. It's because as you go from left to right, you add one. And as you go from right to left, you subtract one. So that's why you're getting the same thing every single time. Does that make sense? So when you match them all up, and no matter how many terms there were in the original series, like if he had said, add up the first 1,000 numbers, not the first 100 numbers, there would still always be a counterpart. There's always going to be a matching up, right? Now, what I've found here is a whole bunch of 101s. What do I have on the left-hand side? I've got two lots of this partial sum, correct? Two lots of the sum of the first 100 terms, okay? Now, because we have written it in this way, that s of n is the sum of the first n terms, we know that there are, humor me, how many terms in this partial sum? There are n of them, right? So how many lots of 101 do you have here? 100 of them. 
That's what multiplication is after all. It's just repeated addition. Okay. So if what you want is actually not double the sum, but just the sum itself, then all you have to do to both sides is divide by 2. That'll become 50 times 101, which gives you the answer that Gauss trotted back within 15 seconds. Clever guy.